Welcome, everyone, to the Singles Committee Podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of May 24th, 2023. Hope everyone's having a good Wednesday. Thank you guys for understanding. Last night, I had a migraine. Not in like the, oh, I had a migraine and didn't want to do it. It was like, oh, no, my brain was about to jump out of this, my skull. But I'm feeling better now. I'm hydrated. I'm caffeinated, which is good. With me tonight, as always, I've got Kamish, full-time squatter pit girl, and guests of the programs, Andrew and Chicken Sedan. Andrew, how are but, you, sir? But the, the other Andrew. The other Andrew, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The Nebraska Other, representative. Ne yeah. Nebraska, Andrew, how are you, sir? The, the corn correspondent. Yes. Um, that's right. That's right. The corn, corn correspondent. We made that up. Corn correspondent, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing good. Just kind of hanging out today, watching some Eastern Conference final hockey. Chicken Sedan, how are you, sir? I mean, I would argue that given my profession that I won't speak on, I might be more of a corn correspondent. <laughs> but uh, I'm doing great. I spent the last probably about 70 hours or so the last two weeks playing Zelda. So it's, it's wonderful. I want to play that game I've been, so badly. I've been but... fusing all my shit together. I'm so excited. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just fusing I, I shit wait. on shit on shit. I I've got all, last all my of... batteries, and I realized I really don't have anything to use the batteries for. <laughs> most of my vehicles suck. I made this drone that I attack camps with, and half the time it attacks me. So I... I'm in my last class of school, and I'm like, as soon as I graduate, oh, yeah. I can play Zelda. I found a YouTube video on how to make like an orbital bombar bombardment satellite. <laughs> So I've been using that to nuke Gleox. I've been super happy about that. I, I did kill Gleox. I feel this game has gone over the top and I don't know anything about it. I, I do love how this game has rapidly become A, Korok Space Program, and B, mm -hmm. The Legend of Zelda Link Does War Crimes. Like, yes. that's what's going on here. I've also seen uh, Human Centipede Korok. <laughs> oh no. They've attached all the little Koroks to each other. That's so much effort. Be kind to the Koroks. They're just little guys. I did see a video last night of somebody recreating Mario 64 when you drop the penguin off the cliff of mm -hmm. them doing that with the Korok. I just, every time I have one of the little Korok things, of like, I want to get to my friend. I go, well, I'm going to put one rocket on you, yep. <laughs> aim it sort of, and see if it works. <laughs> Good luck. Try to walk from there. <laughs> Love it. Kamish is so Good confused luck, buddy. for the listener, by the way. Hey, girl, oh, how I mean... are you? <laughs> Sorry, good cut you off. Go. I'm looking at the chairman's face about your during confusion. this conversation. <laughs> we got we got halfway through the introduction. We talk, we, We're making we, we go, go to Pit Girl because I'm I'm staring at something on the side of the screen. We can talk about in a little bit. Um, in that case, breaking news: I am going with a cousin of mine who is a lacrosse expert to the men's lacrosse final four this weekend. So stay tuned ooh, for cool. updates. On time. Get to watch the sky hockey. I love now, that. Kamish, that what are you looking at, Kamish? That's, that's, uh, I, I just want to say the lacrosse, like, uh, around Memorial Day, that is, like, the ultimate. I, I don't, I don't pay attention to lacrosse any time throughout the year, but Memorial Day weekend, there's the lacrosse Final Four. I'm there. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even, you know, I don't even know who's going to be there, but I am watching it, and then I will develop fandoms out of one of the four teams. Uh, the Final Four for uh, Division One is... Penn State, Virginia, Notre Dame, and another ACC team that I am forgetting. Um, it's Duke. Please hold. Yep, Duke. Okay, thank you. So that, that is the most, this is the most yep. fucking men's lacrosse ass men's lacrosse well, final. Well, it's really well, there's, not there's, there's because no... I would not have expected Penn State. Um, even yeah, considering. There's no Syracuse. Yeah, even Syracuse, considering that yeah. Pennsylvania yeah. is very like field hockey lacrosse, like it's a very heavy state. I don't think about Penn State as a men's lax power. It's like. A little too like ag school vibe to be a lax school in my brain but they made the final four and good for them i guess <laughs> i think i'm gonna ride who's i mean because we talked about the who mascot on last podcast so i yep. I'm, I'm going straight for the who's and you Fully have to bring the who's you got to bring the who out if y'all win the title bring it back i refuse to choose any of these Virginia is the I least objectionable under the who signs so i have to go with the who so commission what were you looking at well, before we started the podcast, we were talking about, you know, Andrew, the corn correspondence, his, I guess, foray into the bacon craze. He fully got into the bacon thing. And then towards the end, his mom got him something called Baconopoly, which is bacon version of the Monopoly game. And so I've just been staring at what the names of the properties and like the taxes and stuff would be in this Baconopoly game. So I just want yep. to read a few. Please do. All right. So... Collect 200 as you pass. Sizzle is the, like you sizzle. Uh, sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would make people actually sizzle in my game. The railroads, from what I can see, it looks like side cut, fat back, pork loin, the fun things like the chance. Mm -hmm. It just says got bacon. <laughs> 
Every card is just yes. Are the utilities love... like eggs and avocados? So the utilities, is, which I think from what I can see is imitation bacon, pay $75. Okay. Pork belly tax, pay $75. It looks like frying pan for one. <laughs> There's a there's a square that just says cured and smoked. I think that's that's chance. I believe and, and that's chance. I don't know if the chance is the got bacon because the bacon's shaped in a question mm, mark. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe it's community there's chest. Chance then. a community com- chest. I don't know. It's one talking. of those two. And the jail for bacon is is burnt. <laughs> wow. So it says go directly to burnt. The problem is though, like you can get out of jail. You can't get unburnt bacon. Do you roll doubles for like a, a fresh slice of bacon? I don't, I don't know how this works. You also don't visit burnt bacon. In the burnt uh, bacon jail, uh, it just says, just crispy. <laughs> I just have Daenerys tar bacon, the unburnt, mm-hmm. just in my head now. Pieces. You can't. Oh, the pieces are great. You can't, see on, this, you you can't see on this picture, but I want to know what the free parking is. Uh, it is, that is the. Can't see it. Uh, free, it says free bacon. Oh, well, I mean. That's <laughs> oh, come simple, on. Simple that's enough. great. I'd also like to point out some of my favorite properties, including bacon floss. Yes. Bacon air freshener. Okay. Bacon lip balm. Yes. Bacon vodka. Oh. I have bacon seen all bandages. these in real life. Bacon bandages. Uh, yeah. Bacon Ohio. What? <laughs> that is not a real town name. I am saying that now. <laughs> We're just starting that game off early. Cheesy bacon popcorn. Okay. Something called the bacon explosion. Okay, yeah. so that's actually that's actually delicious. Terrible for you, but delicious. Bacon Ohio is like real. A... Bacon Ohio is real. Bacon yes. Ohio is real. I've been okay. Ohio for most of my life, and I've never heard of it. Uh, Bacon Where is, is an unincorporated community in Linton Township, Coshocton County, Iowa, oh, oh, Iowa Ohio, United <laughs> States. It used to have a post oh, office. It's unincorporated. That counts. So the as far as I can tell, the I guess boardwalk and park place of this game would be Bacon and Eggs is Park Place. And for, I guess, Broadway, it would be the Bacon Strip. Lame. Lame. Is there a BLT somewhere? There is or a BLT. Like a, BLT's in a the bacon, area. Bacon, egg, and cheese on a bagel? There's, there's a BLT. It's in the area of Marvin Gardens. Uh, oh, you know, something down there. There's a, a really good property section. It's like the Bacon Cheeseburger, the Bacon Wrap Filet. And, you know, you got the yeah, chance the of the explosion. got bacon and then the bacon explosion. Those are your Pennsylvania avenues, your your dark green. Yes, the dark green. Yeah. So, uh, I just dropped the tokens, I believe, in the oh, chat. Oh yes, yeah. What are the purple properties? The wait, which the purple? The, the, the first ones. The, okay, I can't so that's they are bacon, bacon grease, <laughs> bacon grease, and bacon bits. So, the, less the, less than Baltic bacon Avenue floss and whatever you know, and less than bacon nays and shit like that. Yeah, this yes. is like. Bacon grease is the most useful of those all. Yeah, this is a severe undervaluing of bacon grease. You can get in on the ground floor in Baconopoly. Undervalued property right there. Is that like Do they a... use regular houses? I don't know. Uh, yeah, well, I haven't I seen the houses. Have... Yeah, hold up. I haven't seen those yet. <laughs> I do like the I'm pieces. Looking. The little piglet is so cute. He's so cute. Yeah, it's like a it's a piglet and a heart and a sandwich and pizza and a, just a thumbs up, I guess. Yeah. Is, is that a donut at the end or? Yeah, I think that's the bacon top donut. The bacon donut. donut. Okay, the bacon top donut. Yes. It looks like, yeah, it looks like they just have boring-ass houses and hotels. Oh, mm-hmm. come on, man. Sorry, they're, co- sorry, sorry, these, those are smoke houses. No, okay, Hold there on, we go. Look at, look at this. Wait, sorry, with one pork, with two pork, with three porks, or with four porks, and then with a smoke house. <laughs> oh. So, those are pork shops, sorry, pork shops. Pork shops. So pork shops mm-hmm. and, and smoke houses, which are green and... So, I, that's what I've been staring at, so, welcome to the podcast. Are you guys going to rake me over the coals about my fucking couple of mistakes on the giant ass 40 team chart I made? I think our followers that, already did that. You can just shame that me. enough. Yeah. yeah, you can just humble yourself great, and apologize on the podcast. Uh, friend of the program, Arch, rolls into the chat the other day and goes, man, I'm glad you're doing it, Jordan, because all of your followers being like, um, actually would have made me want to throw things. So when you did this last year? Yeah, I'm out there trying to defend in the replies because, like, you you would just drop this mm-hmm. on the timeline, and I'm in the replies and like, well, you know, I'm I'm defending what you posted this year. I know I just let you, I just let you no. go. I was yeah, just like, don't do that. I'm not, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that at all. Because my responses are always going to be like, 
guys, I, I hope the folks on here have helped me with this for the most part. And they've seen this, but followers, if you don't know, everyone's website is shit. Oh, God. Okay. Every oh, yeah. organization has the most shit website. They're all like, we have a conference coming up. Our national title's coming up. Are the results on this page? No. no. It's in a 128 page PDF that's all sorted out by like individual person and event. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what it's was the one where it's like, one. Well, well, title or not? Well, well, actually, in page 92 of the PDF, the it was the flying, it was the flying one. <laughs> it was the flying one. It was the flying one. And then we couldn't, 120 get, page PDF. we couldn't get Embry Riddle correct because there's an Embry Riddle in Florida and Arizona. Yeah. We put the wrong logo and we angered everybody in Arizona. So it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun putting this together. We like doing this. We, we're big fans of throwing this out there celebrating the non NCAA champions because all the weird sports like dairy cattle judging, like <sighs> Irish dance, quad ball, soil judging. We, we love all this stuff. We got more coming next week and we, we, we're trying our best. We're trying to verify. I, I was grilling Jordan over like the water skiing champions. I was like, Hey, you know, are we sure here? Uh, are we, we sure there, you know, we're, like, we're trying to go, and when we're we're going through these these websites, they're 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 just absolutely awful. <laughs> they're... Is there a, is there a jeans division of water skiing championships? The Alan Jackson Chattahoochee division. The Chattahoochee. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah. The, the, the Alan Jackson Invitational. Yeah, Alan Jackson. Well, we named the trophy for Tennessee versus Georgia the Alan Jackson Water Ski Jeans Trophy. They don't have a rivalry trophy, so. That is their trophy now. The the Chattahoochee competition, I, I don't know who would win that, but I'm sure they would learn a lot about living and a little about love. I think the ones that we got the the, the most interaction with on this one was one, pit cricket. Yeah. Especially coming off the West Virginia not even like qualifying this year. Get wrecked. Pit, pit cricket dominance. And also we got pit hurling coming up next time too. Yes. Pit hurling who's a dynasty. They have a we real also, banger of a logo too, by the way. We've had, I think the other ones we got lots of things about were, one, I had Nebraska listed as the forensics winner. They were not. Oh. Western Kentucky won it again. Yes. Nebraska won Lincoln Douglas debate. Okay. But in the forensics competition, not the debate championship, because that's Wake Forest. And yeah. they won like all three debate championships this year. That's the other problem with this is we have lots of split titles. Like you want to talk about like the dancing ones or the ice skating ones where there are like real fundamental differences like this is schism schismatic stuff here like there's an ice skating you know the the avignon ice skating competition <laughs> shit like that to get back to the debate there's that's like the one sport that you're never gonna get any blowback from the participants of uh who won or who didn't you wouldn't hear oh, anybody yeah, no, absolutely in not. Debate competition tell you whether they won or not Oh, yeah, no, they're, no. they're just gonna they're just gonna accept the outcome no matter what mm -hmm. right well actually well, actually, well, actually, the the other the other ones that made sense to everyone was UCF winning paintball. That makes sense. Yeah. Just fundamentally, that makes sense. Uh, the the Ohio service academy is winning this too. version of boxing. They are, and so is Tennessee. <laughs> Tennessee uh, tracks. Uh, yeah. Air Force winning skydiving. Everyone's like, this makes sense. This is unfair, but they were worried about Air Force not winning flying. Like, so they were they were very worried. Like, well, they can jump out of the plane, but. They can't fly the plane really well. I mean, is, is is that the problem there, Air Force? I also got to shout out Tri C Triceratopses, the Cuyahoga Community College Triceratopses, who won the landscaping <laughs> over BYU this year. Hell yeah, that was big. And everyone loves their cute little Triceratops logo. Let me let me drop it in chat. It looked cool as hell. Is BYU a known landscaping powerhouse? Yes, yes. I think they won last year, right? They did, they did win last year. Yeah. Like their proximity to not a lot of water. Well, it makes them oh, yeah, efficient. Landscaping, not waterscaping. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Drop, <laughs> drop in the Tri C logo in the chat. It's great. I love it. Isn't oh, that's it, uh, amazing. It's amazing. Isn't it Texas A and M who always talks about their turf management, or yeah. is that a different school? Ooh, well, I wonder if there's a, I wonder if there's a turf. Management. There's a lot of ag schools in the SEC. They're going to tell you about their turf management. A and M and Mississippi State are two right off the bat. Yeah. They're going to tell you how good that they are at. At managing turf. The problem is they have an unfair advantage of being in the South. I want to see like Alaska Fairbanks turf management. <laughs> uh, I to give you guys a little bit of a preview for next time. I got things like cornhole singles and doubles. Both SEC teams won those. I'm shocked. I have I have a split title <laughs> of percussion ensembles. I have men's and women's polo. 
traditional power, North Texas won the men's polo championship. <laughs> Kaka. Also, they won the large trumpet ensemble. And then Alabama's a Crimson Tide absolutely destroys a wheelchair basketball all the time like they always do. Hmm. Hey, they're, what's, they're, a, what's a they're large accessible. trumpet ensemble? Are the uh, trumpets large I, or is the ensemble no, large? <laughs> no, it's five to eight people. It's it's a large group of people. <laughs> Although they said that you can use you can use bass trumpets, piccolo trumpets, and flugelhorns, but nothing else. Mm. The International Trumpets Guild, Trumpeters Guild, is very specific. What's a bass <laughs> trumpet? Yeah, what's a piccolo trumpet? A piccolo trumpet's adorable. Let me find a picture. Yeah, pic- yeah. bass trumpet. Bass, bass trumpet is basically right. A tuba, it's isn't it? what is the point of a bass trumpet when it, tuba it exists? It has to do. It has to. It has to do with like it's 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 how it's built. It's not. Uh, let me see. B- before band people get mad at me, I want to clarify that I was a drummer. So <laughs> I, I don't know these instruments at all. The secret yeah. fourth key? Uh, yeah, it give, you had a fourth valve on it. it helped. Is that how you play the secret chord that pleases the Lord? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Also, uh, this is another version of the bass trumpet. I'm going to drop a picture in the chat. It looks great, too. Oh, I like that one. What? You have to put it on like a peg stand, and you play it sort of like half vertically. Yeah. That is a trombone hero-ass instrument. <laughs> that it looks is, like something it? I built in Zelda. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it oh, all yeah. comes back to Zelda. It's yeah. You can play, you can use cornets and trumpets and flugelhorns, but you can't use anything. It's yeah. The International Trumpeters Guild is very specific about this. Wait, what wait, about wait. Bugle? So I'm sorry to interrupt. Trices yeah. mas- mascot the the triceratops. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you know what it's named? What, what is it? Stomps. Yes. Oh, that's so awesome. Comfield, I'm gonna need so you to license Trice like tomorrow. God, it's so good. Yeah. And where is Trice located? I'm sorry. Cuyahoga, Ohio. Okay. County. We actually have, we were talking about how we don't have any college football news, and then a bunch of it dropped today. <laughs> so we can talk a little about each one of these things. First off, your the migraine, ACC, your migraine act, uh, acted up and, and gave us content. The ACC board of directors said they're going to have a success incentive initiative. They're going to have performance bonuses for school based on postseason revenue, uh, revenue based on postseason opportunities. All other revenue will be, conti- will be equally shared. So congratulations, Magnificent Seven. You won, right? Right. Because yeah. all of those teams are going to be equally big in postseason revenue. Uh-huh. Congrats, North Carolina State. You got it. I can't. Right. I genuinely cannot wait for this to turn out the exact same way as the ACC trying to stack the divisions so that they would get a Florida State Miami championship every year, and that never happened. Yep. It's going to be great. Congratulations on Boston College on your future yep. fat stacks of cash. Boston College and Wake are going to start running the table. <laughs> it's going to be great. I can't wait till it, you know, Pitt and Wake Forest back to back year after year after year. Over and over and over again. That stacks of cash. Okay, Orange Bowl cash. Oh, yeah. That's right. This is just, this is the same thing that. I like the fact that it's based on performance. They're going to share all the rest of the money, like TV revenue, the ACC network, where they advertise the, that weird sun shield and sunsetter retractable awning. That medicine, oh, that medicine, that, the medicine bottle stamp. The medicine bottle thingy. You, it blacks out your information on your medicine bottles. That's right. Because <laughs> Cause that's identity theft. That's, Identity theft, and you don't want anybody getting a hold of your old medicine bottles because you need your blood pressure medicine when you're watching ACC football. I was so excited to have YouTube TV this year and finally watch ACC Network, but I still get the regular commercials. I don't get the good, weird commercials. <laughs> I'm sorry that you it? missed out what? on all of the tack shades and spurtle. What about the, what was, what was it like alien tape? Yes. Uh, that yep. was the one, the alien tape. You got to love the ACC commercials. So, Everybody will split the revenue from those weird commercials on the ACC network. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, you get a little performance incentive. So, you know, Wake Forest going to the ACC title game, Pitt going to the ACC title game. Yeah, you'll get it. You'll get your little bonus. You, you'll get your, your money that way. If they go to the New Year's Six bowl games, you know, you get your money that way. You don't have to share it with the rest of the Syracuses of the world or anything like that. I guess you I got your one up anybody. But I was watching TV the other day, and I got a commercial for Ohio. <laughs> just like, like the state? The concept of? <laughs> Ohio. Like, <laughs> they were it putting a, billboards up in, in, in Detroit advertising for Ohio. And there, there's one that you can see from Comerica Park. You go to a Tigers game, and in the outfield, there's a billboard for Ohio. <laughs> what are you doing here? It was weird. There was one point in time where we would get commercials in Louisiana for, for Michigan. Mm-hmm. But that was when they were really pushing the pure Michigan. Pure mm-hmm. Michigan. I feel like the state tourism boards randomly advertise for like for certain states on random channels. I, I don't get it. Like the state's like, hey, we're really gonna throw some ads. Come visit us. 
come visit us here in South Carolina. So I know like Michigan's been running off the pure Michigan for a while, but like, do any of your other states have like weird tourism slogans? Nebraska's for the longest time has been, honestly, it's not for everyone. <laughs> Now, Ohio that is, is that is our tourism all, slogan. I don't know what Pennsylvania's tourist terms tourism slogan is right now off the top of my head. Like I can see the welcome sign in my head. I can see where the slogan should go, but I can't remember what it is. But I do remember that at one point they changed it from the state of independence, which it was at one point because that was too close to the sob tagline, which at the time <laughs> was welcome to the state of independence. <laughs> It looks like Pennsylvania's is now pursue your house. That's right. Oh boy. Uh, Texas, is, I know. it's like a whole other country, which that's been ours forever. Yeah. I know West Virginia is almost heaven. They've done that for a while. And now, now it's wild, wonderful West Virginia. Oh, right, right, right. I found a list uh, from Thrillist where the current, they give you the current slogan of the state and then they do a better slogan, supposedly a better slogan. The one, the one for uh, Maine is, is got me cracking up here. The slogan for Maine is discover your main thing. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the real one? That's the, the real one, apparently. I thought it was just okay. vacation land. That's the real one. It, it, you know, the vacation land's on the license plate, I believe. Uh, Louisiana license plate is Sportsman Paradise, which, you know, whatever. There's really high limits on fish. You can just like get like 40 and still won't hit your limit. But Maine, uh, they said their better slogan for Maine is a preview of the apocalypse. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, I, I have a problem. Delaware's is endless discoveries. Yes. I'm going to say that Delaware does not have endless discoveries. It is bounded very clearly. Yeah. Like, I could discover everything in Delaware very quickly. There is the, the top secret sneaky notch at the 12-mile circle that not everybody knows about. Oh, yeah, there's the notch. But I, f I feel like once you've seen the notch, like, you're good. Yeah. I think Delaware should just lean into it and say, no longer Pennsylvania. I dropped a Michigan plate in the in the chat, and, and I absolutely adore the new Michigan plates. But Water Winter Wonderland is very silly. Oh, I like how the new Michigan plates have, like, returned to the way that license plates they're, used to be. This is actually They're very incredible. Good. They're great. We saw them before we moved here, and I was so excited to get a Michigan plate. <laughs> this gives me an opportunity to yell about my favorite Pennsylvania license plate, which they really, really need to bring back. Um, okay. Once upon a time, so the classic Pennsylvania plate looks very much like the Michigan plate that you're talking about. It's blue with yellow text. At one point in time, there was also ones where it was blue, and then it had the state of Pennsylvania inside it in yellow, and then the text on the inside of that was blue. We need to bring those back. Those whip. <laughs> I really like the old Pennsylvania plates that are all blue. Or no, so yeah, I see the ones you're talking about. The ones that are all blue but have like the the um the little birdie bell in the center. Yeah, those are good too. Like those. Like, it's like solid color plates. I love that look. The old California plates are great. The Vermont plates are great. Like solid color plates, absolutely. Or make your fucking license plate in a cool shape like Nunavut and the Northwest the Territories with the fucking polar bear plate. And it's amazing. Yeah. Also, you've got a friend in Pennsylvania. I mean, we, we yes, I do. do. Yes, yeah, I we technically do. have yeah, several, yeah. yes. I just remember the Pennsylvania.com or whatever place that we're on. In the, in the early 2000s when I used to drive through all the Everything, time. Everything, everything.com in the early 2000s. It's yeah. www.state.pa.us and I have one of those on my car. <laughs> Real catchy. Yeah, oh. need a link shortener for that PA. <laughs> Homestar wanna, it's .com. Next, we get, we found out today, well, we found out last time that there were all these concessions that the Big Ten teams were making because they fucked up the NBC contract. And had to play games at night in the winter, in the in the fall. We found out specifically that Michigan State Penn State was going to be a Black Friday game, and then today we found out they're playing it at Ford Field, Senior oh, yeah. Day for Michigan State, <laughs> two hours away from their stadium and indoors. Land Grant Trophy. I said you have to make sure now they have lots of marching contests at Ford Field, so I know that the gates are pretty tall, but I'm not sure if the gates are tall enough to get the land grant trophy and we might have to tip it on its side. It's a, it's a big boy. So we're gonna have to make sure that it fits in there. Can you open the roof at Ford field? No, I don't think, I don't think Detroit having a retractable roof was a big priority. No. Oh man. I, um, I would really want the retractable roof quick lane bowl. Oh God. <laughs> I, I'm, it's I'm gonna be three quarters open only. The field. It's well, the day after the Lions play on Thanksgiving. And, and more interestingly, usually apparently, I found out this today, the Michigan High School Sports Association has usually has their finals on Black Friday. Oh, is at it? Or field. 
And so they're moving that to Saturday, Sunday. So it's going to be games on four days in a row on that field, which should be a lot of fun and a lot of mess. How many Patreon subscribers do I have? Can I go to all four of these days? <laughs> <laughs> Just camping out at four field. There's going to be Just some rafters up. you can sleep yeah. in. No one's going to catch you. There's I'll a... take the bus. I don't have to park. <laughs> yeah, you're good. We'll, we'll get you down there. We, we got Just it. Where... You gotta go Just to wear like paper. a high vis vest and a construction helmet, and they'll think you belong. Yeah, I, who's going to tell you no? Right. If just, you've got a clipboard and you walk with purpose, right? <laughs> if you really want to do it, just start walking somewhere with a ladder. Get a friend. It's like, hey, we got to go in. We got to go in. Can Can you open the door? Just walking with the ladder. You, somebody's walking with the ladder. You're going to let them in because I mean. Like, Nobody would just Who tells randomly... a lie holding a ladder? No, yeah. Nobody would just randomly be walking around with a ladder to get into the game for free. No, th- there's a purpose behind the ladder. It's I was I was there last year for the Quick Lane Bowl, and after the game, I was like, oh, my press pass allowed me to get down on the field. I'm walking through the bowels of Ford Field, and all these people are just telling me where to go. <laughs> like, I, this is so weird that I'm over here. It was, it was weird walking when I went field. to Las Cruces. I, I'm in the, the press box with the guy at New Mexico State, and the game's over, and I'm like, okay. And I look at him, I'm like, hey, can we go on the field? He was like, yeah, you have a press pass. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, this, is my first, this is my first time ever doing this. <laughs> you know, I, I went on the field. I, I played, you know, running on the 10-yard line. I was like, he's at the, yeah. he's at the, the 20, the 15, the 10, touchdown. I didn't a even realize old man this. running for a pretend touchdown. Sixty year old man. I took a selfie with the New Mexico State mascot. <laughs> I, I I got a picture with the New Mexico State mascot too when I was down there. <laughs> so it's great how how New Mexico State allowed us to do this. So shout out John, New Mexico State Media Relations. If he ever listens to this, we we're gonna be likely coming back to see you later this year. The other thing we found out today was that Texas A and M has chosen a maroon out date <clears throat> already. And they're playing their Maroon out game against Mississippi State, which, if you know, is another Maroon team. Now, their Maroons are different, but... Give me the Pantones. Let's go. Here. Show here, me the let Pantones. Me, let, me, let me drop both colors in the chat for you. Pantones. Texas A&M, according to their brand guide, which you know me, guys, I'm a brand, a brand guide head. Their Pantone color is 7421. Okay. I'm going to drop that in the chat. Is that like a hex code? That's a Pantone code. Pantone, uh, the okay. C- CMYK is 1,539.69. Nice. And then uh, Mississippi State. Love, love these brand guides. Everyone's so good about these. <laughs> what do these colors mean? Uh, by the way, that color for, uh, for the Aggies, that is called, I believe, Aggie Maroon. Yes. And then we have Mississippi State Maroon, which is very different more of like a matte maroon Mm -hmm. yes yeah by the way i love the fucking accent colors that mississippi state has chosen i'm gonna drop these two their accent colors is just fuck it any color oh my god yeah oh wow (laughs) this looks like one of those like built-in color palettes from power bi where it's like it does i'm gonna make your graphs look so pretty i don't know about these are all and in the secondary accent colors make a little more sense except their accent colors are real out there but i guess their accents for a reason so I'm I'm confused by A and M's choice of the maroon out. So let's yeah. go over their home games. Okay. I think they normally do the maroon out against an SEC opponent. Okay. But I'm not sure. But let's let's go over their schedule. They start the year at home against New Mexico. New Mexico's cherry red, so a maroon out versus a cherry red team. That's probably going to be in like white or silver. Or or it's also a team that's probably not going to have a ton of fans there. True. Yeah. Their next home game uh, against Louisiana Monroe. ULM, which, I mean, there's maroon That's there, maroon but there's some, like, yellow in that maroon. There, there'll be, like, a very tiny, small section of, uh, of excuse, ULM folks. Excuse me, excuse me. The color is not maroon. Uh-oh. The color is a uh, Warhawk. Oh, yes. Uh, that's Pantone 202. Dropping that okay. in the chat as well. Beautiful. <laughs> Love these Pantone. The, the week after that game, they welcome Auburn, which is blue and orange. A maroon out would probably be good there, I guess. Then they have Alabama, a maroon out versus Bama. No, Bama's crimson, not maroon. Then the week after that, they have another maroon team coming, uh, South Carolina. No, sorry, not oh, maroon. Is that That's Garnet. Okay. That's Garnet. Okay, all right. That's shaded maroon. There's a lot of maroon teams in the SEC. Yeah, I just realized <laughs> that. <laughs> and then the last... Uh, the last home game, home SEC game, is the Mississippi State game. So 
I mean, you had a couple of different choices, but there was a lot of maroon there. I think you would probably go with a maroon out against Auburn. I would, I would think. I mean, given last year for Texas A&M, and uh, I'm gonna sound like I'm hating now. If you're gonna do a maroon out, you want to do it on a game you think you're gonna win. Yeah, like, who see, are they gonna see, beat? <laughs> state being an unknown next year, like an unknown quantity, like that makes sense. And you want it a little later in the year, I guess. But it's gonna be just a lot of maroon. I really want them to to just Mississippi State wear what you wore in the 2000 Independence Bowl, in the Snow Bowl in Shreveport, wear that icy white, all white, the MSU helmet, like just the complete inverse colors of AM. Just go all white. But watch AM fuck this up and not wear maroon this game. <laughs> like they'll wear their camo cut, like the, like camo wear, America ones or they'll, whatever. They'll have a blackout. The other interesting bit is that we got confirmation of a non-conference game that I don't think anyone cares about except for us. Eastern Michigan has added a home and home with San Jose State. And the only reason this is interesting is that the only two times they've played are times we've talked about on this podcast many times. <laughs> it was the 87 California Bowl where yes. Eastern Michigan won and this past year's Idaho Bowl, Potato Bowl, which Eastern Michigan won. They've only played, Eastern Michigan has like, I think, they only ever played in two bowl games? No, Eastern Michigan has only won two bowl games, and the two bowl games that they've won, they've beaten San Jose State in both of the bowl games. I feel like San Jose State is just like, hey, can we, like, not lose a bowl game to you guys anymore? <laughs> Let's do a home and Eastern Michigan's being ballsy, putting their streak on the line here. I know. Why would you... It's like Rice. It's like Rice, like having the record against being undefeated against Alabama. Never yeah. play Alabama, Rice. No, never. Don't ever keep, fucking, never fucking keep, do that. Keep playing Texas mm-hmm. because it's hard. Do yeah. not play Alabama. Yeah, because Alabama's easy. <laughs> My favorite fucking play is the guy with too much Bama in him coming off the bench and just because watching that play, the dude comes off the bench and makes a like a really good tackle off the bench. But there's like three other tackles that are just amazing in that play. It's such a good play. That was also. When I found out that there is a rule in football where if someone does something like very illegal to stop a touchdown, refs can just award the touchdown. Yeah. Like that is still a thing. Yeah. We never see it anymore, but like that is within their power just to be like, it's like if you if you tackle someone from behind when they're have a clear thing in soccer, mm-hmm. that's a red card and they get the kick and they get the kick. You can just award the touchdown. It's kind of like you goaltending in basketball. Right a lot. When I was yeah. in high school, in college, we we you get the penalty to try in rugby where somebody gets tackled right. illegally late. Yeah. I, I just imagine if that happened nowadays. <laughs> Everybody would flip Oh, these, oh God, I, I wouldn't have, like, I would have the best day on Twitter ever. It's like the infill fly rule. Yeah. Everybody just freaks out every time it gets called. Or a bulk. Except a bulk is so, okay. is like, is much a, less, a what? is much less. Bulk. A bulk. And you mean a bulk? A bulk. A bulk. A bulk. Oh, a bulk. Or a bulk, yeah. It's a hard word to say. It's, it's spelled B-A-L-K. Yeah, but How you keep you saying it? bulk. No, I say yeah, bulk. <laughs> Bulk. Is it bulk? <laughs> like like it's the, bulk. Incre- the incredible it's a, bulk. It's a it's a, a bulk. Okay, that's not like bulk. <laughs> like like walk. Bulk. Yeah, you, you <laughs> get it through me saying it. Walk it bulk. first. Come on. Walk. Well, <laughs> now I can't say walk right. Walk. Walk. <laughs> walk. <laughs> I feel like this podcast is just somebody mispronouncing something or using a word wrong and. And that's what we do here. So uh, wait, it's like it's, it's balk, like a chicken box. <laughs> balk, balk, rise and walk, walk, walk. Oh my god, <laughs> walk, <laughs> walk, and, <laughs> walk and balk, like buck, buck, buck. The only way to win the Sickos Committee podcast is to never talk. <laughs> talk, <laughs> talk. <laughs> that's that's been my problem. Is talk. I talk and I walk. <laughs> I talk and walk to my balk. <laughs> With my chalk. Balk. <laughs> rock, rock, <laughs> Jayhawk. Rock, rock, chalk, Jayhawk. <laughs> the, the, the Iowa Hulk guys? Yeah. <laughs> We're going Yinzer except adding L's instead of R's. The, the War Hulks. <laughs> War Hulks. <laughs> I'm from, I'm from Louisiana Monroe, my war hawks. <laughs> that sounds a real that, that sounds like a really good Monroe accent there. I, I I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I I have no transition. Next thing. Yes. Found out found out today. Segway. Uh Segway. I, the Idaho, the Idaho Vandals put out a 
they released their schedule a long time ago. I just hadn't looked at it. They, they released a calendar today. We followed the Idaho Vandals. Yes, we and did. I noticed their account, and I noticed this wallpaper, and wall, wallpaper. <laughs> God, you got me thinking out. <laughs> I just ruined the rest of this podcast. I'm sorry, folks. They only have four home games next year. That sucks. It has to do with, apparently, they got rid of a D2 game and added a D1, a FBS non-conference. Or no, they added the Lamar game, I think. But it's a it's a home and away, and so they had to they took the home first. But they go three games on the road against Lamar in Martin Beaumont, I believe. Beaumont, Beaumont that's, right. that's not too far. Uh, maybe it's like four or five hours from me. On the other side of Houston, yeah. Uh, then Nevada, and then Cal. But their home game schedule is great. They have eight conference games, four home, four and away. It's just because all their non conference are away. But at home, you get Sacramento State. Montana, Montana State, Ooh. and back the back rivalry leads. game against Idaho against the Bengal. Like that's a great home. Like if I were an Idaho State season ticket holder, I'd enjoy this because one, I get to watch four great games, and also lots of weekends off where I can rent the Kibbe Dome out mm-hmm. to watch the other games. Mm-hmm. I love that. I believe this was you tweeted. Yeah, you tweeted me. this. You were like, "How does Idaho only have four home games next season?" Everybody jumps on this because everybody loves the Kibbe Dome, which you know everybody loves the Kibbe Dome. Why wouldn't you? It's 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 the fifth wonder of the world. I, the fifth, sure, sure. yeah, uh, the fifth or fourth, whatever. Yeah, I think ninth, uh, eighth is the Memphis Pyramid. But, okay, but most so the ninth wonder gone. of the world. But most of them are gone now, and so okay. you could swap out like like the mausoleum. They still uh, okay. how? Not anymore. Not anymore. Okay, so we'll we'll insert the Kibbe Dome into the wonders of the world. You tweeted that, and the funny part is like it, it takes off because everybody loves the Kibbe Dome. We start yeah. getting a lot of retweets and quotes. Which is unexpected to us. Like, we still don't understand what we're doing here. And then there's a lot of people that follow us on this account, which is still ridiculous. And then we get the Big Sky responding to us. Like, the actual conference Twitter responds to us. And the Big Sky goes, vandals love going on raids. I'm like, well, you know, vandalizing other stadiums Mm -hmm. instead of the majestic Kibbe Kibbe Dome is, is smart. Then Idaho football, they indicated due to their success, they needed to add another FCS Division I game to look better for going to the playoffs, which they made the playoffs last year, the FCS playoffs. And so it hit me like, oh, okay, this this registers to me. Like our account is is kind of at a point where we're like too big. If we say something like off the cuff and it gets picked up and kind of goes semi-viral or whatever, like we're going to get actual information off of this. Mm -hmm. Like we're going to get the explanation from the source I was I was a little upset that the uh, the big sky beat me to my my terrible your joke. vandals uh, joke. It was good. The vandals are they play a lot of away games. Mm-hmm. What is being a vandal but racking up the away wins? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm hoping to get to a big sky game this year. I have one planned in my mind. I don't have any tickets or hotels or anything booked. But I, I think you're I, gonna be, I think you're okay with tickets. I think you're okay. You're over here wish casting. Well, you know, well, I mean, I'm talking about flight tickets but oh yeah okay. uh, i was like tickets was to like, the game I, think, I, I will, I think, I, will we, I think we got game tickets settled game tickets settled. i think we got enough you know thank you patreon supporters i appreciate that we we could probably afford some game tickets to a big sky game so we definitely do appreciate that but really i i want to go to like the big sky conference office and say hi uh, and meet meet those folks and, and just just stop by and then, then drive up to like a Big Sky game or, or drive around to a Big Sky game in the area. Again, it's just weird that we're in this spot. We're at an account made for like 20 people to make inside jokes with uh, being at this level. It, it's insane. I, I'm just loving every minute of it. So thank you all for following and, and listening to this. We're just making inside jokes with 80,000 of our closest friends now. It's fine. Exactly. Almost 90. Almost 90. Yes. Which Almost is- 90. We're start. We're tracking stadiums. I don't know where we're at now. Eighty nine five. What stadium are we at? Is that Penn State? That's got, they gotta be. No, they're. We're definitely there. not Penn State. I think we just passed like the swamp or something. Yeah, we were in the uh, vicinity of the swamp last week. Last time we talked about this. Uh, we're past the Rose Bowl now. To get to the Cotton Bowl, we got to get to ninety two. That's our big next big jump. So the Cotton Bowl. So we if we get to... over, if we get over one hundred and seven, we have passed the big house. Okay. Then we then we're trying to get. Uh, was it? Ray wrong May 5th Stadium in North Korea, whatever that is. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we just passed uh, the Swamp, which is 88, 548. We don't have many to go. We have, you know, Georgia, Alabama, Texas. Yeah, we got 
I you know, really we, got the, that Nor- we got the big ones. Break, up. I really thought that North Korea stadium had more than 140,000. Yeah, break, breaking news, because I clicked into that same Wikipedia article. They re-estimated the number of seats in 2014, and now the world's largest stadium by capacity is Narendra Modi Stadium, formerly known as Motera Stadium, a cricket stadium in Ahmedabad, India, with seating capacity of 132,000 spectators. After that, the goal is going to be Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 250,000 people. Let's go. The last thing I want to talk about is the Webster Gorlock. <laughs> Webster University has a great chess. tradition of chess yes. championships. And their mascot, someone mentioned, is the Gorlock. And the Gorlock is awesome. I'm going to drop it in the chat. This is the old Gorlock. They've had like five versions of the Gorlock. It seems it like is... something from like the old one. It seems like it was something from like a Chuck E. Cheese band. I was going to say, it looks like something from, from like, from like, dark crystal i could see how he would be friends with antioch the birthday spider could be so so the st louis area has both the gorlock and the billiken yes they just just love their cryptid mascots the gorlock name derives from a combination of two streets that intersect at the heart of old webster gore and lockwood avenues and the mascot itself has the paws of a speeding cheetah the horns of a fierce buffalo and the friendly face of a saint bernard (laughs) I don't know that I see that. No, it looks like a cat to yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, it it's got some issues. Also, I love how this is just like modernist dumb sphinx or like modernist dumb chimera, where it's just got random random body parts. Yeah, I mean the old one looks like it could fit in like a furry version of um, what's ah, uh, Rocky Horror Picture mm. Show. Yep. Now. This- can- can I say the statue looks great though? Oh yeah. This like the statue itself, I like that statue. That I can see St. Bernard face, yeah. horns of a buffalo, paws Amazing. of a cheetah. Yeah, Does the furry ones? Absolutely not. The ones when they started in 1984 with the mascot, not not that great. Which is weird. We're finding weird mascots in the early 80s. Like <laughs> last episode we had the Who. And then a year later, 1984, we have the Gorlock. I don't know what was going on in the early 80s, but we're we're all for it. Oh my god, this guy would be such a hit at a furry convention. Appar- apparently, was, so the, the the one I dropped may have been from a furry subreddit. Actually, I, I was about to that. comment. I was like, "That's a furry." Because this shirt doesn't oh, go yep. down far enough. Mm-hmm. Oh lord! And he's and he's got a big badonk. <laughs> a yeah. gorlock badonk. Yeah, he's like. <laughs> He's like stacked. I like how we accidentally rule 34 in ourselves. Even that yeah. pose, everything about him. That may be from a furry subreddit. Apologies, so my apparently, folks. Apparently, <laughs> apparently the Gorlock embodies the highest standards of speed, agility, stamina, and an atmosphere of fairness and good conduct. Which I and don't he's know what that means. Up beyond repair. He's caked up. <laughs> so if you ever want to join our Patreon and see live images that we're, you know, <laughs> probably not going to tweet. <laughs> I'm not, not going to tweet the cake Patreon, of Gorlock. Patreon. Sickos <laughs> Committee. Join us. It's $5 a month to join our Discord. If you don't know how to use Discord, we'll, we'll teach you. It doesn't matter. Come on in. We chat all day long. I believe we were talking about the concept of giving New Jersey to Pennsylvania and and, and making making why Rutgers that... move to Philadelphia for some odd reason. I have no idea. Why, but why is that Gorlock holding a Georgian flag? Uh, because they opened a new campus in Georgia. Republic is, of. Is that so? Is that a Gorlock? <laughs> yeah. Also, I love unlock your Gorlock. Unlock oh, your Gorlock. Love it. <laughs> Unlock your I want to sc- I want to scroll up a little bit, proverbially speaking, um, and just highlight the like mini logo of like the speeding Gorlock head, like the Buffalo Bills logo, but it's a Gorlock. I was more watching, looking at the one with the sprayer. Yeah, I, yeah what does the sp- what is the sprayer for? What is he He's doing? Commission, like, 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 like I continue the sprayer. I can't remember if that's pest control or fertilizer. Like, is he winning li- landscaping? I, I did bevel one of him the other day, so. I, I want to just mention the first Gorlock stood six foot three and was cl- covered in blue fur. That's just Beast from X Men. <laughs> Might also be the Who. We don't know how tall the Who was, but or I'm no sorry, idea. the What was blue. We've reached the fifth generation mascot of the Gorlock, and that that, that happened Doctor Who. that that happened like in March Doctor. of 2013. <laughs> we make it a sixth generation mascot. Regenerate. <laughs> I really want to know if we can figure out any campuses. It, it, like any universities that we could figure out 
since they just use like Gore and Lockwood, if there's like any famous campus where we could do like intersecting streets and just make up a fictional mascot. I don't know if we could do that off the top of our head, but uh, that, that would just put be, that in for later. We'll, we'll put that in for later, but a fictional <laughs> mascot based off of intersecting streets, which they made. And then the students yeah. designed this. Like the We've students got a few more weeks of off season. We can get of that. We got a lot of off season. <laughs> the students drew this, which is which is great. We have our we've sold our 69th thing. Nice. Our nice. store. Our most popular sellers are in this house sticker and poster, our number one Sickos football fan shirt, five different colors, and our number one Sickos fan football sticker. All that stuff that you buy will go to helping us get to more games and do more content for y'all. Toss in cash there if you want some stuff. Otherwise, Patreon. Otherwise, keep doing what you're doing because y'all are the best fans on the internet, except for the ones that are creepy. You get creepy. Please stop doing that. Uh, also, the, the creepy ones? yeah, the creepy ones. Please stop doing that. Hey, hey you know what's funny? You know, you try to do chat GPT, you try to do, you know, mid journey or whatever you type in sickos or, and then somebody responds to us like, man, that's sick. Or you guys are really, truly sickos. It gets flagged <laughs> as like adult content. I'm like, really? I guess so, I do remember when I had chat GPT write lyrics for our non-existent theme song. It, it suggested that we talk about sex a lot on this podcast. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, given this last... Uh, well, I mean, after we, we saw that Gorlock. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, so you're telling yeah. me that we've been accidentally rule 34-ing ourselves the whole time? More like, more like, well, hold up. More like an engorged lock, am I right? <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. That's right. Pop, drop, and Gorlock it. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. There's my title. Yep. my title. Found it. Title. Cool. Thanks for doing that. I do enjoy Sometimes when the readers to... take it, take bets on who said the episode title. Yeah, we've we've got odds in our Discord now. <laughs> like over. what what person on the podcast said the episode title, and we had odds thrown out there in our Discord. Because our Patreons are so great, we've asked them to also to ask some questions for us. We answered some last time. I figure answer one or two today, and uh, we'll go from there. The first one is. Is Syracuse good? And I'm going to say, first off, based on the Jarrett Cher- t- Bundy tart cherry bowl <laughs> char- chart. Wow. Come on, man. Cher- 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 Bundy bowl. It's a bark. Cher- Bundy. It's a bark. Cher- <laughs> Bundy ball. 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 I'm going to say yes, because Syracuse went all out on the New American Pathways bowl. Uh, fundraiser so good for yep. them we can definitely be bribed yep they're good they're yes. good Syracuse is definitely good based off of that definitely good we're not affiliated with the full cast or like, like all of them but we were born out of the discord for them which you know it's, it's a great cause and and we're glad to just be like an ancillary part of it and to just basically publicize it for them which they raised nine hundred and ten thousand dollars, which is incredible so yes syracuse is good and they're very nice Shout out Bodie hey, McBoatface. No, you're listening. Go the Gorge. Shout out Bodie. So this is what I want to ask here. What's your favorite places that you've traveled for a bowl game? Sorry, for any game. Any game. I'll start with mine because I haven't, I have, you know, despite what I've, I talk about, I haven't been to a ton of like big games. One of my favorite places to go to games is actually at Harvard Stadium. It's this big old, like it's, it's, it's been around for a hundred plus years it's got this like scale that's very big and vertical. It's a really great stadium. It's an open horseshoe and the vibes there are just really nice. Like I love, I love that stadium. It feels it, great. It feels like a great Roman Coliseum. I walked by it. I think it's called Smith stadium. I think, mm-hmm. or it may be called something else now, but it, it has like the columns, like Greek columns or the Roman columns around it, which it, 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 it seems like it'd be a great place to watch a game. Kamesh, what was yours? So like best game atmosphere that I ever traveled to, or just the best like the best place to watch a game that you've been to. Well, you know I, I'm gonna be biased, but you know the the New Mexico State thing was was great. But as a fan, I mean I, I really I, I went to Tulane Stadium, uh, Tulane Stadium. Uh, I'm sorry, to the Superdome and Newman, that which is great. Tiger Stadium is incredible. I, I have been to Tiger Stadium way too many times, so it it feels different to me. It, it feels you know, it's just like a normal atmosphere. It's like the Tiger Stadium's incredible. Everybody's like, oh, Tiger Stadium's nuts. Kyle Field, great. You know, I got to see ULM play there. 
and get killed like 4810. I think my favorite one that I went to, I really enjoyed Jordan Hare. Uh, Jordan Hare was, was just an amazing atmosphere. I've been to two games there. The one where Jamie Howard threw four interceptions and Auburn came back to win. And then the other one that I went to at Jordan Hare, which I, I, I've had to swear not going back to Auburn, is where the barn caught on fire. I promise you. I, I That's didn't right. Do it. Yeah. I didn't do it. I, I didn't do it. I'd like to blame, you know, my dad's friend. He was drinking 151 in front of the barn. I'd like to blame that on him. But, I mean, you know, he's smoking cigarettes and just drinking like a giant cup of 151 with, with a little Diet Coke on top. So, I mean, who knows? But, Seems no, like it, a pretty it, reasonable it, theory it, to make, Mish. I, I, don't, I don't know. Have you guys ever done the thing where you where you take in 151 and then blow it out over a lighter to get a fireball? 151 is no. illegal in no. Pennsylvania. Well, and they stopped making it too. Yeah. Now. Yeah. 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 So yeah like back in the, the back thing in... where they like light the the liquor and then put a cup over it and then you're supposed to like take a straw and inhale the few. I have yeah. done that. We like we called it smoking a shot. I've done that, but I've never <laughs> I've done like, a have fireball. Have you, have you done the flaming Dr Pepper? Oh yeah, I, okay, I've done those a lot too. Yeah, when like the bar, I... I used to bartend in college and after college. When the bar catches on fire, yeah, you probably got to slow down with the one fifty one. I do want to say this: the the game that I went to where the barn caught on fire, the fan that was drinking the one fifty one like around the barn where we entered because the fire was behind us. It, it, he's a Wazoo fan, so I rest my case. It makes, yeah. it, makes, yeah. it makes sense. I'm not. That's just a normal like, Saturday for him. I mean, we were drinking the whole time. Oh, well, I wasn't drinking. I was actually a teenager, but my dad <laughs> and all his friends were drinking. And it, 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 my dad used the trips to all these SEC schools as like, "Hey, we're going on school trips." Mm -hmm. uh, there was visiting one. Schools. It were, he's visiting schools, and, and he would say that I was visiting for like a baseball scholarship to get really good parking, and, and it, it, it seemed to work. But, yeah. you know, it, it was a lot of fun. And that was in the 90s where nobody gave a crap, really. Uh, there wasn't internet for security or anything like that. So I, I'd say Jordan Hare was probably best atmosphere. It was night. It was nuts. There's a fire going behind me. And it was, oh, God, it was hot. Uh, it was very warm. They just kept playing the game. Hey, girl, what's yours? I am actually not particularly well-traveled when it comes to football stadiums. Uh, my first in-person college football game was my freshman year at Pitt when they opened their ACC career and we got our asses handed to us by Jameis Winston. So despite having been an Auburn fan for most of my life, I have never seen a game at Jordan Hare. All of that to say, I think the best like stadium experience was at um, at Mercedes Benz for the Peach Bowl. Everything everybody says about that stadium is true. It's real nice. The upper deck, I will say I accidentally bought tickets in the last row of the upper deck because if you look at the <laughs> seating, seating chart, it's not actually the last, last row because there's pullout bleachers like like in high school behind the last gotcha. seats with seat backs. And the, the stair pitch in the upper deck at the Benz is like this. And that's not great. But Ooh, otherwise, really nice stadium. The vibe during Peach Bowl was great. Pitt traveled very well. I ran into some of my friends from college that I didn't even know were going to the game at the College Football Hall of Fame. 10 out of 10 would recommend. But I think in terms of like the vibe in the building, 2016 Penn State and this year's backyard brawl absolutely meant first and now or the 2022 brawl and then the 2016 penn state game in that order are the two highest attended sporting events in the history of pittsburgh so i was there for both of them party hard chicken sedan so i've actually uh listening to pit girl's uh story about not being well traveled i'm probably less well traveled i've been to maybe I think three FBS stadiums. But if, if to answer the original question, I've been to two bowl games, both of them at Ford Field. One was the back when it was the Motor City Bowl. And then this last year, the Quick Lane Bowl. I think the Motor City Bowl was fun back, I can't remember, 2007, I think, because we ended up going to a little restaurant in Greektown afterward and all the UConn players were there. The, it was UConn Toledo. Uh, but the best atmosphere at a college football game was by far 2011 uh michigan notre dame the first uh night game at michigan stadium under the lights if you i mean Ooh, nice. it's pretty easy just to watch the last hundred uh, minute 22 of the game pretty wild and pretty fun and andrew yeah i'm gonna chime in with everybody else i'm also not super well well traveled for games my favorite 
experience is probably going to Folsom Field, um, Colorado Stadium. I posted a link in the chat. It's just a gorgeous stadium. You've got the Rocky Mountains oh, yeah. right behind you. Like, so if you're sitting in, I don't remember if that's the visitor or the home section, but where I was sitting, you got to see the mountains. Um, getting to watch Ralphie run out on the field is a great time too. I, yeah, it just, I, I, I love everything that. about Colorado Stadium. Seriously, just them having that little slight end zone that spells out Colorado in all black is just something yeah. amazing. I remember growing that growing up as a kid, Cordell Stewart from New Orleans, he went to Colorado, and just to watch him play, uh, watching him play for Colorado and, and seeing all those touchdowns in, in that end zone there in, in Folsom Field, just an amazing spot to watch a game. I love that yeah. end zone. It is there's something weird romantic about 1990s Colorado and personally I cannot wait for Colorado Nebraska this year I am I'm oh, yeah. so excited I saw something like tickets are going for like 315 bucks for this game uh, I am they're up, so they're excited up to a thousand game. bucks thousand? Jesus oh my god yeah like like I saw the resale market it was like 350 to 950 oh my god so yeah, like, yeah I, like, I, I I would love to go to it it's I'm it's a terrible scared. drive. It's a boring drive, but yeah, Boulder's a fun town. Kamish, I'm glad I didn't pay attention when Cordell Stewart was in college because uh, <laughs> the Hail Mary against Michigan. Yeah, I know, I know you're a Michigan fan, but that I might have killed, might have hurt you. Yeah, <laughs> might have hurt you a little bit. You know, definitely Michael West work uh, and and Cordell just just heaving the crap out of that in the big house. So that was that was one thing that you never really forget growing up just watching college football. But but sir. I have been a college football fan my entire life, which is incredible. And and I, I really it's fun to be doing this what I'm doing right now for fun. We also want to give a shout out before we go on to our next thing to the Message Board Geniuses podcast. Those guys do some great digging into the parts of the world that we would not will not dig into. <laughs> so give them a listen. They cover the fun, just like hair pulling craziness of the message boards where all the other fans to see you guys follow us and you guys probably follow the same college football media we follow. So we've trimmed that down to some very, at least reasonable people, but there are some people out there that just lose their shit all the time and message board geniuses keeps an eye on them. They're probably yeah. not necessarily followers of, of us, but you no, know, the they do every once in a whenever whenever our shit breaks contained, you can tell. <laughs> you can because, tell, yeah. Because a lot of hurt feelings show up. It's yeah, like, a lot of what, hurt feelings what, what show you, up. Well, what it's, do you mean? What do you mean Nebraska had a bad season? What are you talking about? Nebraska's coming back, baby. Okay, let's all take like, deep Hey, breath. hey, hey, the Sick House Committee, we offer catharsis and we're very <laughs> cathartic for, you know, just to do that. I think some of the message board geniuses post that really went off today. Colorado is going to dominate all you losers in the Big 12. <laughs> also, apparently USC is playing 3D chess. And, of course they are. you know, again, Tennessee fan is just reading the Twitter tea leaves along with a, a Mizzou fan penning a heartfelt letter to a recruit. Oh, no. Is, Don't, oh do no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Which is, I mean, it's got good format. It's better, <laughs> no. than, better than Don't what I write. Don't tweet at recruits. And that includes no, writing letters. Anything is a, a he wrote After a more consideration, we don't have to hand it to him. <laughs> <laughs> Under no circumstances do you have to hand it to a guy who's <laughs> writing a letter to a recruit. He wrote a letter to a recruit. I'm just going to post that in the chat. Just like, no, the, no I'm going to do that. It's just. My dearest Ryan. Wait, I need, I need a shocking lullaby of, of, over an, this. Hold up. An open letter to insert na uh, name of recruit here. So. God. Oh boy. No. No. Don't it's, do this, guys. Don't do this. No. Don't weird. do this. It's not that serious. Weird. Yeah, this is weird. It's, it's, weird. it's college football. Yeah, you, you know, that's... you know how we talked about how we like it when our followers aren't weird. This ex <laughs> this is an example of being weird. Don't be this guy. Don't do that. Hey, this is all for fun. It's college football. We we know not everybody playing the game is going to wind up going pro. We're here to celebrate everybody at every level playing this game because it's an amazing chance you get to play football. You're going a little bit too far here, but the Message Board Geniuses, their podcast takes it and they just go to town and talk about these posts that these people make, which is like, hey, dial it down. You're at about uh, an 11. Let's get it down to maybe about a two or three here. No no Ryan, open letters to recruits. Writing an open letter to recruit is 11 is shit. <laughs> him a valentine why don't you god oh my god don't do this because we're already running a little long we had a bunch of stuff 
Let's go to best season. Yeah, let's go to the best season of all time for teams who are below 500 all time. The B S O A T F T W A B 500 A T for short. Uh, we're on part 20. Can you pronounce that? Of 39. The Basop 500 Act. <laughs> Thank it's you. It's pronounced <laughs> Bolt. It's pronounced Bolt. <laughs> Oh, if you say that backwards, what does that activate? <laughs> Seriously, if we say that backwards, I, I feel like maybe maybe I think that's, you know, how, you like that's <laughs> how you summon the warlock. I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna say if you play it backwards, it says write letters to recruits. That, uh, <laughs> it's a sleeper phase. It's sleeper phrase. That. Yeah, we're 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 definitely gonna skip a few things. We we gotta get to uh, our best team for for the red wolves. Of Arkansas State. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Y'all, we're going to Jones Boogie. It's Arkansas State time. The first season of Arkansas State football was 1911, but they had their first real success in the 1950s as part of the NJCAA, the National Junior College Athletics Association. Their first real big thing was the Refrigerator Bowl of 1951. Going to drop a program in the chat for you. The Refrigerator Bowl was played in Evansville, and it's because Evansville, Indiana, was the refrigerator capital of the world at the time. What? They had three refrigerator plants. Three okay. refrigerator plants in Evansville. What? It's sort of like how in Indiana, there, there are like cities that make all the marching uniforms mm -hmm. or all the like, musical instruments. Indiana still makes shit. This reminds <laughs> so me of like Kalamazoo. When we oh, talked about like, the, the celery capital. Oh, it was a celery. Was like, I thought it was like yeah. asparagus. It was celery oh, capital. It was yeah. celery. Yeah, it was the celery capital. So the refrigerator manufacturer headquarters, they, Evansville, they, Indiana, all the fridges. The refrigerator manufacturers employed 10,000 workers post-World War II and produced 3,800 3, refrigerators a day. A day? A day. My God. And this was played in the Ritz Bowl, Ritz Bowl at a high school in evansville this game played from 48 to 656 and it had teams like delaware college of ohio Kent, idaho sorry uh, western kentucky abilene christian evansville played it a couple times the last one was sam houston state versus middle tennessee so that gives you an idea about sort of like a great quote from the the article the wikipedia article in 1956 the contest attracted just 3,000 fans less than a third from the bulls peak attendance putting the future of the game in doubt in late august 57 the JCs finally announced the demise of the refrigerator bowl, citing, quote, a lack of public support and failure to find a sponsor for the event. The same year, the city's largest manufacturer of refrigerators, the Serval Corporation, went bankrupt and closed its plant, signaling the beginning of the end of the city's golden age as, quote, the refrigerator capital of the United States. Wah, wah, wah. I think I saw but, a, a TikTok of, of them going through all the features of, like, one of these refrigerators back in the 1950s. Where like one would be like a suitcase full of fruit, and the oh. other one it would just be like a crazy in depth door where they had like full cooked food where you just pull it out. God. So I'm imagining Evansville doing all of this. I just remember being a kid and thinking my friends with the ice dispenser were rich. That was the fancy one, yeah. I still this aspire to live in a house that has an ice dispenser fridge. Yeah, no, I still I still don't have. I one. don't either. This. This is one that My had a fridge. My refrigerator can't take magnets, and it bothers me. <laughs> I hate what? that about stainless steel like refrigerators. Steel, and I can't I have the same problem. The same it. problem. Um, I can I... only magnet at the part of my. I, I have the French door refrigerators, and I can only magnet on the part where the ice machine is because that's real metal. So the ice machine half, I can put things on. So all my kids' foot like things are like in one co upper quarter of my fridge. So now next time I go refrigerator shopping, I'm going to bring a magnet with me yes. just to... Yes. Yep. Yes. yes, the yep. brushed steel, it doesn't take magnets. I swear, it's so stupid. You also have to make sure that it's a, a fridge that you can watch the Pac-12 network on. Very important. Yeah, it's true. Oh, of course. We don't have that. Uh, we, I've dropped... We do have a filter. The picture, in the, chat, uh, the picture in the chat is of Vinny Ellender. He was Arkansas State's most successful head coach ever. <laughs> He's wearing a delightful bucket hat. I got more pictures of him, too. Immediate reply in the chat asking for us to add the hat to the merch store. Just for context, listener. It's a yeah, real it's good, a good hat. hat. Hey, we do have a bucket hat with Sicko's Committee on that. I was like, I'm not we a bucket hat guy, one. but that's a good hat. Uh, during his eight day year at Arkansas State, Coach Ellinger established a 52-20-4 record, unequaled by any other coach. In addition, under Ellinger's control, Arkansas State have appeared in three times, in three times in the Pecan Bowl, 
the NCAA's Midwestern Regional Championship game. And we'll talk about what that means later on. The Pecan Bowl was sort of their end of their season uh, greatness. He had mostly pretty good seasons at Arkansas State. They had gone to three times in a row to the Pecan Bowl. Pecan Bowl. If you're one of those people. And while he was there, except for his first year, they went two and six. He went 7-0-2, 6-3, 7-2, 4-5, and and then the three big years, 7-3-1, and 8-1-1, and and 11-0. And this was all in the Southland Conference. This Arkansas State team was in the small school division. This would have been like D2 at the time. First off, let's finish talking about the coach. Coach Ellender actually ended up going home to Tulane after this year. He was a Tulane man. And then after this year, he ended up going back and get the Tulane job. Let me post for you guys his career. He was born in Louisiana and died in Metairie, like any good Louisiana wants to do. Hey, I, shout out for saying Metairie correctly. I, I appreciate that. Oh, I mean, that's where the airport is. <laughs> no, it's in uh, Kenner now. Kenner, but okay, yes. yeah. Kenner, bro. The only two places he ever coached were Arkansas State and Tulane. Wow. That was his, that was his entire career. Huh. He is part of the Arkansas State program's Hall of Fame, considering he's basically the most successful coach there wow, in he's program from, history. He's from Sulphur, Louisiana? Mm-hmm. That town stinks. For real. <laughs> I, I assume it's <laughs> named born, Sulphur. No, I mean, oh, God. it's right outside of Lake Charles, which when you go in there, you will hold your nose off of I-10. It is just, oh, man. You go in there, it, it's <laughs> bad. Okay. It is very bad. There's a bunch of oil and, and refineries, okay. and they do sulfur. And basically, it's it's named after refineries there, but that, that town is, whew. Yeah, there's bad. a line on the Wikipedia. Uh, However, the sulfur was beneath several hundred feet of muck and quicksand containing deadly hydrogen sulfide gas, which made mining extremely hazardous. I'm glad they finally repaved the interstate, Interstate 10 there. Because you would basically, if you were in the wrong lane, there's three lanes as you go through the curve through that town. If you were in the wrong lane, your undercarriage is going to die. So let's talk about the people on this team before we get to the subject, before we get to the uh, outcomes. First off, we have Calvin Harrell, who was their big running back. He ran for 1,131 yards this year, an average of 125.6 yards a game. Passing was James Hamilton, their quarterback. He threw for about nine completions a game. This was not a pass-happy team. And their biggest receiver, Chet, Chet Douthit, I'm going to say, only went for about 44.3 catches per game. So just saying. Wait, so they, they averaged nine pa- nine completions a game? I believe so, yes. A- yes, nine completions this, a game. And this guy caught half of those? Yeah. Hell he yeah. was almost 1,000 yards for the... For the season and five TDs. He was their passing game. King. To give you an idea how good their defense was, especially their rush defense, they ran for about 224 yards a game and held their opponents to 117. Hmm. Passing defense was not as good. They passed for about, they passed for 1,800 yards that season and opponents passed on them for about 1,500 yards. But overall, this whole season, they were averaging about 400 yards a game. So this was a run first run heavy offense that was just a lot of fun to watch if you could watch them we'll talk about that later on the schedule up oh, too many tabs again guys uh-oh oh no i just put in the discord about sulfur louisiana the bayous near sulfur are habitat for american alligators which have been known to enter into the city so stinky alligators is what you're saying <laughs> oh god it, alligators. Feels like, it feels like a, a left for dead game or something <laughs> like, fighting off alligators and stink z- zombie alligators stinky zombie alligators <laughs> uh fallout four fallout five whatever number we're on set in sulfur louisiana oh no. good god yeah. fallout louisiana holy shit <laughs> holy shit i mean it's gotta be better than fallout four shout out to the game norco if you have steam or anything oh like it's that. a great game yeah. norco shout out to that game which is is based off of cancer alley which is the other side of the state but Really, sulfur should probably be a part of that. Louisiana, it's trying to kill you. This team had a schedule that was about what you would think. Notice that as week two, they were ranked first, and they did not lose that ranking all season. This was not in the AP poll. This was in the small colleges poll, which is, I don't even know what it's called now. (laughs) I I would just say that. I would say this is like baby FCS. Yeah. FCS. FCS. The Southland. The Southland Conference at the time was 
Arkansas State, Abilene Christian, Trinity, which is San Antonio, Lamar Tech, which became Lamar, and UT Arlington, which no longer has a football team. The first game, non-conference, they beat Wichita State 53-14 to and just blow them out. Shocking. I didn't realize this. They were known as the Corn Shockers? Sure. The Orange? Orange no, Shockers? No, no, the Wheat Shockers. That's, the that was the actual... The Wichita State Wheat Shockers was their actual name at that point. What? Yeah. Well, that's where Shockers comes mm-hmm. from. Is yeah. The top of the wheat. I did not know that. I learned that today. Uh, today I learned that you shock wheat. Oh, I learned oh, about that reading one of the Laurel and Gulls Wilder books. It's when you like harvest the wheat and then you stand it up in a little thing. They played Southeastern Louisiana, then the Citadel, Trinity, won all these games by a little bit. Louisiana Tech beat them 38-17. Good. Then beat ranked Abilene Christian 28-23. Take that. Beat, beat Lamar Tech 69-7. Nice. Beat North Dakota 23-18. This is the North Dakota, not state. At UTA, beat them 27-17. Then beat this, our beloved Saluki, Southern Illinois, 27-13. And then beat Central, Central Missouri State in the Pecan Bowl 38-21. Every game was not like a total blowout, but they ran through the season pretty well. So let's talk about these yeah. games a little bit. Most of this is coming from their yearbook, which they have online. Oh, also, I wanted to I want to talk about in the yearbook, you're supposed to have these like delightful things where you talk about every season, every team, and you know, all these things. But I want you, I want to drop something in the chat. This is their headline for the golf season. <laughs> <laughs> they did not hold back at all the My headline God. is simply the headline is simply golf has bad season why does this look like an onion article <laughs> <laughs> looks like the way i would hit a golf ball that's the maybe maybe we can watch spencer play golf like this oh my god <laughs> my god this pants are so short too it's so great and he's wearing like the angle. old the old people orthotic shoes too. So this team finished as the number one small college team. First off, that first game against Wichita State, that was sort of the, their big push to get them number one. That got them the recognition. And then after that, they had these games. Now, I found out though, the Wikipedia article is wrong about a game. They did not play the Citadel at home in Jonesboro. They played that fucking game at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock. Oh God. Uh, oh wow. That's why the, wow. that's why it's so, that's why it's so much bigger. That's why sixty thousand people showed up. So they still they played a game in War Memorial as well. Oh, and watched them drop uh, twenty four on the Citadel. So all right, all these games came through. The one I want to get to though. Oh, first off, this also headline is great about the Lamar Tech game. I'll drop this one in the chat. The headline of just Lamar, another victim. That's that's a very it's such like a yawn kind of headline the last one the one i want to talk about is the crowning victory i'm going to read this whole article about the pecan bowl because it's great because it's going to require a little bit of context i love this <laughs> lamar another victim the fun began for arkansas state as they drove the scorekeeper and statisticians crazy with their offensive efforts when the smoke and dust finally cleared arkansas state was sporting a 69-7 win and had clinched at least a share of the Southland Conference crown. So now, the crowning victory. The way they describe this game, guys, is so fucking good. Despite a small crowd, incomplete construction, and an opponent that was of little notoriety, oh other than possessing wow. a decent 9-1 record, the Pecan Bowl in Arlington, Texas, was still lauded as a success for Arkansas State Gritters. Oh They're still calling people gritters in 1970? I thought that was right? like a 1910 term. I mean, the dip, the picture here of number 73 versus number 34, we got number 73. He's probably like 220 pounds, but 34 for the other team. <laughs> that guy's like 110. I'm going to skip down. A meager 9,500 fans <laughs> watched the game. They had the nation's finest giving a virtually unknown team going against a virtually unknown ranked team of unranked mules. Uh, by, the, by the way, that's not a slur. Central Missouri, what are the mules? <laughs> Why would you name your school the mules? Oh, their their actual mask, their actual logo is great, by the way. The, okay. I think one of fun. my high school's rivals, the like Hick High School to the south of us, was the Golden Mules. So the Golden, the golden yep. Mules. Yep. It's great. Oh, that rules. That's, that's, that that, that mule's mad as hell. 
this team that they're talking about that ain't played nobody, they were the MIAA co-champs. And here's the, their schedule. This was Central Missouri's schedule this year. They beat Western Illinois, Illinois State, Kansas State Teachers of Emporia, Eastern Illinois, Northwest Missouri State, Southwest Missouri State, Northeast Missouri State. Every Missouri, direction. Missouri Rolla, which we found out was Missouri Mines, I believe. It, it's Rolla, not Rolla. Rolla. And the Lincoln and Southeast Missouri State. They beat all four. Sorry. All four corners. No, they lost They lost to Northeast Missouri State. They beat three of the four corners of the state. <laughs> mm. Almost there complete a domination. Yeah. This, is, this is the team. This That's is them. The team. Yes. They're so oh, there's... <laughs> uh, this team also. This game was also played at, okay, so UTA. Oh, that's a great golden mule. Holy shit. Oh, that's a good mule. <laughs> they also have one that is definitely a ripoff of UCM, but they just flipped it around backwards and painted it yellow. Let's talk about UTA really fast, because this is, Pecan Bowl was played in Arlington, Texas, and UTA had just moved up to the next division up. So they were actually in the middle of building a new stadium, but they didn't have one at the time. So I'm going to show you guys where they played. Oh, I, there's man. not a lot of great shots of this, but this is the best one I can find of a football team there. I want you guys to look at this picture and tell me what you think this game is for. What? What am I looking at here? That is a football team, and that is the stands behind them. Yes. What sport do you a think this stadium was played? This, this stadium was for? This is a baseball stadium. In fact, this is the old ass Texas Rangers stadium. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is what it looked like. Oh my god. Oh god. It's like an out. Oh god, that's terrible. Perfectly symmetrical outfield. It, well, it looks like those like stupid like circular dome stadiums that they were making in the seventies that you could use that were like specifically designed for football and baseball, like the Metro Dome or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's yeah. outside and it doesn't have a roof, and that but it's even when dumber I, that way. When I first moved to DC, the um, DC United was still playing at RFK. It was such a shit. Oh my god, I hated that fucking stadium so much. It was so bad. It's that. The the multi-purpose stadiums of like the 50s and 60s, such a huge mistake. Now, here's the best part, guys. When this picture was taken, did the Texas Rangers exist? I'm going to take that I'm as a no. Nope. No, well, that was the was uh, in, Washington Senators were still this, there probably, this was right? The, this, was the 19, this was 1970. Arlington built this stadium to bring a team in. <laughs> so this is a multi-purpose stadium that was built to bring in in fact they were trying to get the cowboys to play there if you build it they will come dumb I, I crappy the, stadium edition i love the era of america where they would just randomly build a stadium and just try to lure a professional sports team like hey we just built a new stadium move, move here please it's ridiculous because originally there was no upper deck this was the actually the improved version the stun would just beat down on you there. Field usually ran about 105. Someone described the park as small, but not intimate. <laughs> it was, however, the first stadium to sell nachos in the major leagues in 74. Ooh. Tie it back to the Ricos. That's something to be proud about. Imagine coming down if you were like from like Illinois and you come down. <laughs> <laughs> and, and of what course, look, look at the beautiful landscaping around the stadium. There's a parking lot in the north. There's a parking lot in the east. There's a parking lot in the south. The, uh, this this reminds me of the absolute most cookie cutter stadium that I could ever see. It is just it is it is the most right. I I mean you there's really nothing distinct what, about what it. What are the at special all. what are it's the special a, features of this field? It's a, it's a circle. It's a circle. There's a road around it. That's a circle. Everything around it is 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 parking lot. It is. <laughs> This is a SimCity ass. We need a yeah. default stadium. This is yes. the stadium yeah. icon that you get when you build one in Civ Five. The Rangers actually played here till '93. God, <laughs> my God, Good for them. 70, 72 to '93. UTA only played here from '70 70 to '76 because then they built their own stadium that they played in for about five years before they shut it down. But the Pecan Bowl, this great bowl game, was played here. That's why they call it an incomplete stadium. Is because it wasn't finished being built yet, and they had a championship game here. So we, we haven't had any really discourse about pecan, pecan, or anything like that? No, nah, you guys don't let me roll with my, my pronunciation, so thank I you. I don't know how to say it. I don't have a strong I, opinion about it. Nobody has I, any pecan passion here. 
I kind of like. I actually go both ways on it. Like, if I'm talking about just the nut, it's a pecan, but it's a pecan pie. Mm. Ooh. I don't know how I say it, and I just refuse to say the word because I don't know how I say it. <laughs> the barbecue joint in Dallas is called the Pecan Lodge, and no one calls it Pecan Lodge. Pecan I think that's Scott. Lodge. That's like flattened mine out. I think. Okay. I want to read one more line, by the way, about this game. The last Please. line of the yearbook. Originally televised audience watched as Arkansas State ran the score up 38 to 7 and then ran in the scrubs. The Mules picked up their remaining scores in the fourth quarter, but it was too little, too late. They drag this game up, down, left, right, and it's just amazing. I will say that apparently that when the world realized that Arkansas State was good was after the Saluki, the game against the Saluki, Southern Illinois, because quote, at the same time, nationwide interest was quickly aroused towards Arkansas State when the American Broadcast Corp company filmed pilots of the game and broadcast them nationwide as a segment of the NCAA College Football Today program. Many viewers discovered for the first time that there was another university in Arkansas. <laughs> hey. It was a great year for, for Arkansas State and one that will never be forgotten. Not bad for a bunch of poor country boys trying to make good. That sounds like a theme song to the Dukes of Hazzard. <laughs> Just some good old boys. Yeah, more country boys just trying to make it down in Texas. Just some good old boys <laughs> winning the pecan bowl. No, <laughs> the pecan so, bowl. I'm sorry. So what? Ha so what happened after? Well, we got Coach Bill Davidson. He coached at Jonesboro High School, and then in Arkansas State, they did not reach those highs again. He did have, by the way, I, I lie. He had an 11 and 0 season in '75, which is another option for this uh, this thing. In that 11-0 season in 75, they beat Northwest State, Idaho, McNeese State, Memphis State, Southwestern Louisiana, go Monroe, oh. Cincinnati, Lamar, oh, Chattanooga, Southern Illinois, UT Arlington, and Louisiana Tech. But at that point, there was no like postseason for that. And they were the Southland champion, but were not considered national champions. But in the 70 season, by winning the Pecan Bowl, they were the national champions for that division of college football why i think that is the best season of all time for the arkansas state football team the red wolves oh 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 everyone have a good evening and we'll see you on the other side